Okay, for this exercise, this tutorial, I want to prove that the reciprocal of an irrational number is itself irrational. So let's first look at what is a reciprocal. For example, if I have the number uh, 5, then its reciprocal would be 1 over 5. Because 5 can be expressed as 5 over 1. So if we basically flip that fraction, uh, then we get 1 over 5. Or, for example, 1 over 4, the reciprocal would be 4 over 1. Or 2 thirds, the reciprocal would be, or I shouldn't say this equals that, uh, the reciprocal of 2 thirds would be 3 over 2. So it's basically when we flip the fraction. The numerator becomes the denominator, the denominator becomes the numerator. Now, for this problem, or for this proof rather, what we want to show is that if we have an irrational number, which is a number that can't be represented as a fraction, cannot be represented as a fraction, then its reciprocal is also irrational, meaning its reciprocal can also not be represented as a fraction. So if we were just to start with reinterpreting this sentence in like a mathematical symbolic way, that would look like this. The reciprocal of an irrational number, so Let's just start with a number that's irrational. So let's call it uh, x. If x is irrational, so we'll say e an, a number can only either be rational or irrational. So it can either be represented as a fraction or not. So if it's irrational, that means it is not an element of the rational number. So there's no um, that I'm aware of, there's no number, there's no symbol that represents the irrational. So we just have to say that it's not rational. And we want to prove that if this is the case, a number that is not rational, that it implies that it's reciprocal, or in other words, 1 over x, or if we want to give it a unique name, we can call it y, that its reciprocal y is also not a rational number, which means that it is irrational. So, I'm going to do this as a proof by contradiction, meaning I'm going to contradict what we're trying to prove. I'm going to show, I'm going to start with like the opposite of what we're trying to prove, and then if I can show a contradiction within that, then that means that the original point here, which is what we're trying to prove, is true. Meaning, um, uh, I'm not sure how to best describe that. I think it'll be clear once I start doing it. So let me show you what I'm going to start with. For example, we have an irrational number that implies that its reciprocal is irrational. So what I'm going to start with is the, the assumption that y, which is, remember, equal to 1 over x is the reciprocal of x, is actually rational, meaning it can be expressed as a fraction and that x is irrational. So what I'm basically showing here, or, or assuming in the very beginning, is that you can have a number that's irrational and its reciprocal can indeed be expressed as a fraction or is a rational number. So I'm assuming the opposite of what I'm trying to prove. And then what I'd like to show is that this leads to an obvious contradiction, a logical contradiction, which would then invalidate this assumption making the original statement true. And that's the whole approach of a con of a proof by contradiction. So we start with this assumption. So we'll just say, usually start with let, which means that we're assuming something here. And um, we'll see what flows out of this. So if y is an element of the rationals, it can be expressed as this, where p and q that's a semicolon there, where p and q are integers. This is just the definition of what it means to be a rational number. It means you can express, if this y is a rational number, which is what we're assuming here, then you can express it as the ratio between two integers. So if y is rational, then that means this is true. But realize that would mean then, since we've set this up like this, where y is the reciprocal of x, that would mean that y is equal to 1 over x, which we have defined it as such. Since y is equal to p over q, then this would also be equal to p over q. Now if that's the case, 
then we just get rid of the y part. We're just left with this, so we bring that down. 1 over x equals p over q. Okay, well, let's just do some basic algebra. Let's multiply this side by q over p and this side by uh, x. Then, actually, we'll multiply both sides by this. Then, what happens here is the q's cancel, the p's cancel, but we're left with q over p on this side. On this side, the x's cancel, but we're left with x over here. So, I've basically just taken this whole thing and flipped it around, if you want to say it like that. So, basically, we just take the reciprocals of all this. Now, if this is logically implied by this assumption we made from the very beginning. Now, this is actually the contradiction right here. Because what this implies, I'll just choose yellow, why not? What this implies is that x can be written as the ratio of two integers, q and p, because we said from the beginning that p and q are integers, where p and q are integers. But notice, that implies that x is a rational number, which, if we go all the way around here, is a complete contradiction of our starting assumption, that x wasn't a rational number. So here we have, basically, an obvious contradiction in terms. So we started with the assumption that y is the reciprocal of x, and that y is a rational number it can be represented as a fraction, and that x itself cannot be, and therefore it is an irrational number. And then just the logical outflow according to the logic of uh, mathematics, the internal logic, the outflow is that x is a rational number. So it's like we said x wasn't, and then logically showed that it was. This isn't a contradiction. All that means is that this assumption is completely invalid because it's logically inconsistent. And since a number y, for example, in this case, can either only be rational or irrational, and since it can't be this, then the converse, or sorry, the contrapositive of this is true, which is that x is not an, uh, a rational number, and y is also not a rational number. Cool.